Welcome to Woolen Spinning. This is episode 46 and it is November 17th. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as Welford Pearls. For anything related to the show and show notes, you can check out welfordpearls.com. To those who are Patreon subscribers, thank you, especially to you for keeping the show on the air week in and week out. Thank you for your support and for helping me to do the work here that I so love to do. Every little bit helps. If you would like to learn more, please head over to patreon.com slash Pearls. Today's show, we've got a bit of housekeeping that I have to cover. I try to keep housekeeping to a minimum, but every so often I have to do it. And we've got some spins in progress and some knitting in progress. So I hope that you enjoy the show. For housekeeping, we do have a monthly give along going on in the November episode thread as um, in the Woolen Spinning Ravelry group. This was sponsored by my friend Katrina of Crafty Jack's Boutique on Etsy. Uh, thank you to her. I'm going to insert a photo here so that you can see the rainbow gradient that she very, very generously donated. All you have to do is head into the November episode thread and tell us what you would do with it if you were to win it. And good luck. <laughs> um, the color study thread for um, this uh, half of the year, this current color study that's going on is now locked. Thank you to everybody who submitted photos for this study. Karen is now looking at all of the photos and looking through to see what she would like to create for our split complement color study. Hopefully that will be ready for pre-order pretty soon. Patreon subscribers will be able to order their fiber first and then it will open up to everybody else. In terms of the other spin along threads and the big spackle thread, the Zero to Hero 2016 threads, please continue to um, submit all of your photos. I've loved seeing people's progress from over the course of the year. People are starting to finish things now. People are casting off. Some people are just starting to knit and are gonna carry on with their projects into our Zero to Hero 2017. So congratulations to those who, those who have finished. And to those who are going to carry on, I hope that you don't um, lose steam over the Christmas break. So please continue um, encouraging each other and offering motivation for each other in there. Um, like I said, there might be some stuff coming up in December for those threads. So I think that's it. Spins in progress. I actually have two. Well, my first one that I'm going to talk about is actually something that I, I actually thought that I would have mostly finished by this week. So I'm a bit surprised that it's not done. But last night I had, I was the um, program for our local guild. I gave a program on all of the spinning drafts. So everything from worsted to woolen. It was a very intense evening. We had really positive energy. I was actually more nervous than I thought that I would be at the beginning because I was feeling a little overwhelmed with how much to cover for the program. It ended up going really well and everybody was really enthusiastic and there was a really great um, energy in the room, which was wonderful. So I haven't been working very much on my stuff this past week because I've been prepping for that. So one thing that I had talked about last week and I had shown you the fiber last week was this Superwash BFL from my friend Marianne who lives in Kamloops, British Columbia. Um, she's the dyer behind Smith and You. And I highly recommend you go check out her shop if you haven't already. This was some pencil roving and it's very, very bright. Um, I love these yellows in here. These are some of my absolute most favorite colors. And so I took the pencil roving, I split it down the middle and pencil roving tends to come apart quite lovely, quite nicely into two strips. So when you go to divide it, it actually naturally wants to come apart, at least with the pencil rovings that I have dealt with. So envision two of these strips of fiber coming apart. Basically, when you receive the pencil roving, it sort of looks like that, and it just very naturally splits apart. Um, this was always gonna be for socks when I bought it. It's still gonna be for socks, but I am also thinking about possibly doing some with the leftover yarn after I knit my socks. I'm actually thinking about doing a pair of mittens for Nora out of this. So this is what the first bobbin looks like. It's very bright. I didn't do anything with color management. I just split the roving in half and then I started spinning. I'm spinning on quite a high ratio of, I think I'm spinning at 18 to one and 
quite high twist. So I'm hoping that it creates quite a durable sock yarn. I am going to Navajo ply this to keep all of the colors really, really clean. And I spun it at about 64 wraps per inch. So quite thin. And we'll see what it looks like when it's plied. I'm going to ply, over ply it and really um, put a, a lot of twist in there. And I think that it'll make really colorful, fun socks. So that hopefully the singles will be done next week and I'll be able to start plying the week after. The other spin that I'm working on, and this is actually part of something that's going on in the Ravelry group, are is the Cheviot fiber that I had dyed. This was fiber that I had dyed. Um, it's Cheviot, 100% Cheviot. There's nothing added to it. It's just pure comb top Cheviot. After dyeing, it's sort of more like a roving because it, it got a bit beaten up when I dyed it, and that's fine. In the places where I dyed it black, and I'm going to insert some photos rather than trying to hold it here and try to show you. Um, in the places that I dyed it black, it got quite compressed, and I think the fiber fold a little bit. I think it, I didn't felt, because I can still pull it apart, and I can still get the air back in there, but I think it definitely compacted more than I am used to when I've been dying in the past. So when I stripped this down to spin it, I didn't pre-draft it or anything. And so when I sat down to spin it and started drafting, I was naturally getting thicker uh, singles because the fiber was so compacted, it wasn't drafting forward really nicely. And I've got Cheviot in my nose. Um, so I've ended up spinning a thicker th singles than what I had planned to spin and I am going to actually two ply this. So I'm spinning it on a ratio of about 15 to one, maybe it's 11 to one, I can't remember. And I have finished my first bobbin. I love when you look at the bobbin, you can see these bits of turquoise that pop up. I just love that. I'll insert a photo here as well so that you can see. And the wraps per inch of these singles are about 24. So it will be a thicker, if I were to three ply it, they would end up being more of a DK weight sock yarn. And I really don't want it, want them that thick. So I am going to do quite a high twist ply. I'm going to ply the second bobbin will have the same amount of fiber on it. And instead of plying in a traditional way from the two bobbins, I'm actually going to wind this into a center pull ball spin the other singles, wind them into a center pull ball and ply them. And in the end, I'll have two equal um, sock yarn skeins and I can knit them the socks two at a time. So that is part of the blast off along that is running in the group right now. It's basically for anybody wanting to finish anything before the holiday season. So for me, these socks, I'm really hoping I can gift them to my husband on Christmas. <laughs> I it might be a bit ambitious he may end up just getting the yarn but I'm hoping that I can push through and work on them all through December I have nothing now for deadlines nothing coming up I have um all of the big deadlines that I was working towards are all done which is wonderful it feels really good and I feel like I have this big weight lifted off of me so I'm hoping that I can get those done by working on them through December and sort of focusing on them and counting them as my one project. I'm quite a monogamous knitter. I often have several projects on the needles, but I'm usually only actively working on one, maybe two. So these are gonna take the place of everything that's on my needles right now, which is actually very little, which I'll talk about in a minute. And I'm really hoping that I can get them done. I can knit socks in a month, that's no problem. It's the getting the spinning done as well, because I have to get the yarn dry after I finish spinning, I have to wash it. So. I'll be delayed for a few days in that, but fingers crossed, we're only halfway through November. I've got a month and I should be able to do it. So happy spinning thoughts. <laughs> Send me happy spinning thoughts. So part of the blast off along is if you're just wanting to get some projects done before Christmas or before your holiday season, whatever it is that you celebrate, um, the opportunity is just to encourage one another and motivate one another. There's no prizes or anything. It's just an opportunity to really help each other push through this last month of, of getting holiday stuff done. And I hope that you will join us. I have a spin that I'm really jonesing to start. This is Sheep Spot Club. 
It was September 2016's club. It The colorway was called Russian Squirrel. These aren't really um, colors that I would normally gravitate to to buy in comb top, except that the gray is gray is one of my favorite colors. Um, but this was actually white faced woodland top and I'm really looking forward to spinning it. I started pulling it apart and then I put it back together to sh record the show. But the combed top itself is just beautifully prepped and I'm really hoping that after a little bit more research of the breed itself that I'm gonna hopefully spin a an airy two ply. I'm not sure if I'm gonna strip the comb top down vertically or if I'm gonna strip it horizontally with the intention to get barber polling. I'm not sure about that yet, but I'm really excited to play with this and this is gonna be my next spin. So um, yeah, if you haven't checked out the Sheep Spot Fiber Club, definitely check it out. It's a once a year sign up and man, the fiber is just beautiful. So I'm excited to delve into this next. I also have some Shetland from back in the summer's fiber club that I'm really hoping to um, start as well. And that's gonna be a combo spin with something else um, that I have in my stash from the Nest Fiber Club and I'm hoping to do a striped shawl. So I'm sort of starting to look forward to planning some new projects and getting some new stuff on the wheel because I felt kind of stagnant this fall about what I'm working on, which is fine, but it's nice to move on to some new stuff. I'm, oh, maybe he's gonna go. My husband started work this morning at 4 a.m. <laughs> they had a big release that they wanted to push through. So he's home and the kids are outside and James just started using his big boy bike. Um, he's been on a pedal bike for quite a while, but uh, for Christmas he was, he got it early, but he needed the next size up for pedal bike. So he's been on a certain, on the smallest frame size and now he needs the next size up. And so he just this week started using it, which is so exciting. And he was so excited to run outside and show daddy when he got home, but now I think they're getting cold. So I will hurry up and finish and uh, go and check on them and get some dinner on the table. I have been working on my fireside pullover. This is by Jane Richmond. It's a beautiful pattern. Anything that I am about to say has nothing to do with the pattern whatsoever. Jane is a friend of mine and I am just so excited to be knitting this. Um, however, <laughs> I have done a lot of ripping back with this sweater and I think it's twofold. And the reason, so I think the reasons for that are twofold. One, I have really felt worn down this fall and really tired. And when I'm sitting down to knit, I don't think that I'm reading my patterns the way that I should. I think I'm just sort of sitting down and going, oh yeah, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And I just keep on going and I don't check to make sure that's really what I need to be doing. That was definitely the case with my exploration station, which you can see behind me is finished. There are so many mistakes in this that when I do eventually block it and wash it and talk about it, because I'm not quite ready to talk about it yet, um, I'm still processing it. Uh, there's this part of me that feels really disappointed that I made the number of mistakes that I did. And then there's the other part of me that feels as if in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. And wearing something like my exploration station out about, nobody's gonna know unless they're a fellow knitter and they're really inspecting it and can see what I did wrong. Um, the majority of people would have no idea that the stitch pattern isn't exactly the way it was written in the pattern. And knitting on the fireside and having to rip it back and redo so many things with it over the last couple of weeks has really reminded me that with my spinning, it's very much process for me. It's all about, you know, working on the bobbins, working on the fiber, working my way through. And knitting has steadily become more and more about the product. I don't set aside a lot of time for my knitting anymore. Knitting's kind of an afterthought. I've been thinking more and more about learning how to weave. Um, I don't think that I've really been embracing the knitting side quite so much because spinning has really taken over. And in thinking about that and in sort of um, processing that and ripping my fireside back so many times and really not enjoying the process because of having to rip back and realizing that I'm making really quite junior mistakes, stuff that I would have made, mistakes that I would have made when I was first learning how to knit and had misread something and went ahead and did it thinking I was doing the right thing. And really now I should know better and that maybe sounds a bit harsh 
on myself, but none of these techniques are new to me. And it's slowing down and reading the patterns and taking the time to sort of digest the information and look at my stitches and count. <laughs> That's the big one. Um, count my stitches and try to remind myself why I knit it has been really important this past week. Because let me tell you, it hurt to rip out about 80 rows of of the body so I had gotten down to about here on the body of the sweater and I had to rip all of it back up to the yoke and to the uh, raglan separation so this is where I'm at with this sweater the mistake that I had made and I caught it quite by accident I wouldn't probably have caught it until I bound off the bottom ribbing if I hadn't have come across my friend Kelly who's Celtic cast on on Instagram she had finished hers and on her recent podcast, she was wearing it. And I was looking at the collar and I was like, hmm, that doesn't look like mine. Otherwise, I never would have known that I had done something wrong. So what I had done was I had taken all of the stitches along the front panel of the yoke. And I had actually knit them to knit two together, all of these stitches all across the other side of the yoke as well. So in the pattern, in the written pattern, you're only supposed to have a handful of stitches where that technique is used to close the collar so that you can continue working in the round. And I had actually closed the entire front of the sweater. So I was short by about eight inches on the front. And I think the only reason why I didn't catch it was because when I pulled it over my dress form, to check the fit and I was looking at how this all sat my it it actually looked like it worked and I figured with the sleeves they would just pull back into place when I picked up and knit the sleeves but the actual sleeve um sleeve caps for the raglan where the raglan uh, increase is finished the sleeves were like way over here so it was a big wake up call for me to remind myself that not only do I need to slow down and enjoy the process of knitting again and knitting with my hand spun in particular, that if I'm not going to read the pattern and I'm not going to follow along on the pattern, then it's totally okay for me to wing it and do something on my own and to remind myself that just knitting from the top off the top of my head is totally okay too. And I used to do that a lot and I think I'm sort of starting to lean towards maybe doing that again. So here's the sweater again I'm using the wrong arm uh, here's the sweater again and this is what it would look like if it was on my dress form and I think overall I'm really happy with how it's turning out it's just that I feel a little bit discouraged from from that having to rip back so much I still haven't rescoured the yarn I am going to finish the sweater as is without rescouring the yarn this was my uh, local Suffolk crossed with a CVM meat merino ram and I'm just going to finish it off and scour it when I go to wash it to block the sweater and I think that'll work out really well because actually it's not as unpleasant now to work with as it was I think my hands are getting really nicely moisturized from all of the lanolin so that's good and uh, yeah that's what it looks like so far and actually, because I fixed the yoke, everything's sitting better now. Because before I couldn't get the collar to sit properly. And I was like, oh, it'll block out. But actually, it wouldn't have. So I'm glad now that I went back. I'm watching the kids out the window. So where I record in the office, I'm against one of the walls. But um, right in front of me is the big window at the front of our home. And I can see out into the cul-de-sac. And the kids are walking around with their helmets and showing daddy their bites and everything. So it's kind of fun to watch that while I'm recording. I don't have much more to show with share with you um, tonight, but I do have a couple of spoilers for next week. I am hoping that I have the opportunity to wash this and block it, and I'll be able to share this project with you next week. The other thing that you'll be able to look forward to is I received a copy of Yarnitecture from Story Publishing. Um, it was a gift to me to review on the show. So next week will probably be a review of Yarnitecture. I'm hoping that I have a chance this weekend to sit down and really read it. I've actually already been flipping through it. And so far, my verdict is that it's a great book. But I will chat about it in more depth next week. So that's something for you to look forward to. I hope you are all doing really well. I hope you have a wonderful fiber-filled weekend. And until next week, happy spinning. Bye, guys. <laughs>